Welcome back to City Circus. Uh, you know, there's one, for me, memorable occasion uh, during the course of uh, hosting the Ray Canadian Talk Show on Kick FM where I had the opportunity to interview my sister. And uh, it was pretty entertaining to the audience uh, and uh, pretty entertaining to myself as well. I'm joined by my sister, Rena, for uh, our first foray into television together. People have said for many years that we should do a mid-morning show or something like that, but <laughs> you dispute that my blood pressure could possibly be tolerated. My demonstrations of blood pressure could possibly be tolerated by uh, an audience at 10 or 10.30 in the morning, and you might be right. <laughs> um, we grew up together in a what is now in, you know, in what's considered an old school environment in the North End, surrounded by uh, Jewish traditions that uh, come from our family and the region that our family um, uh, originated from, which is Propoisk, which was in basically Lithuania for a period of time, until like just about 1800, and then it, then it became subject of a variety of wars from Poland to Russia. <laughs> but the Jewish traditions that we grew up with uh, remained and evolved. And uh, as part of your journey in life, you have become the, uh, for many years now, the executive director of the Jewish Funeral uh, home in Winnipeg, the Chesed Shalemis on Main Street. Uh, where you wanted to come on the program to talk about Death Cafe, which is a, a program, nonprofit program that uh, you operate. Uh, but I just wanted you to speak for a moment about about your background and and how it prepared you to do the kind of work you're doing within the Jewish community now, and also reaching out to other communities when it comes to the subject of funerals and and death and other such topics. Uh, I would say my background didn't prepare me at all, actually because I knew absolutely nothing. Um, so, you know, even though we had a Jewish education and we grew up in a very traditional family, um, nobody talked about death because nobody talked about death because that's the way things were. We didn't even go to funeral. I, I remember specifically the first funeral we went that we went to because there was a big discussion about whether yes, you whether we were old enough to go. Yes, yes. Um, so everything, I, I've been... Um, I've been managing the Chesed Shalemis, which is the uh, Jewish community nonprofit funeral home and burial society, and I've been managing that for 19 years. So everything that I've learned, I've learned on the job, actually. Um, and uh, just sort of, you know, I say that I, I, I've, gr I've grown the job and the job has grown me. That's how I sort of look at it. So. Uh, during this more recent period of time, there's been a, um, I don't want to use the term revolution as much as evolution, in how society approaches subjects about, about uh, uh, death, about grieving, uh, about the changes that occur in people uh, as they prepare to pass mm -hmm. on from this life, and how families and and communities deal with grief and and deal with the the you know the mundane, more mundane uh, elements of uh, how to carry on. Um, you've ended up being a world traveler on this subject. Uh, well, my my world traveling is actually more on the. Um uh, on the burial society end of things. So uh, the Jewish tradition has a ritual preparation f of the deceased, which is uh, just a very simple uh, washing and dressing, um, very modest burial outfit, very modest casket. Everyone goes exactly the same way. So I've my, my world traveling has centered really on um, education of traditional Jewish rituals and values and also teaching the how teaching uh, volunteers how to how to perform the rituals mm -hmm. so actually how to prepare the body how to dress it how to wash it and uh, the rituals involved in that so now the, the in the course of this though the the element of death cafe which has evolved really in the last five years it's a uh, it's a social franchise which yes. I found a fascinating <laughs> topic yes uh, so the idea of the death cafe um, I actually uh, you know first encountered it on Facebook where you know all good things happen um, so I first saw it on Facebook and a couple of people um, we have a uh, from the Chesed Shalemis we have a Facebook page and a couple of people posted on our Facebook page saying that they would be interested in the death cafe so I did a little research um, it's a worldwide, uh, you know, as they call social franchise, uh, started in uh, 2011 in the UK. And basically, the, uh, you know, based on the old fashioned um, European kind of what they called salons, where people mm -hmm. would get to fancy people would get together and drink tea and have these intellectual conversations about art or politics or. Um, so in the same kind of idea to create, um, you mm -hmm. know, an opportunity for people to get together and talk about all things end of life. So um, if since uh, 2011, um, there have been uh, almost 2,200 death cafes held in over 30 countries around the world. 
Um, so it's it's non-denominational, it's non-profit, it's non-directional, meaning um, you know there's no particular message that that the facilitator is trying to impart. It's simply a gathering, a community, a ga an opportunity for the community to gather to discuss uh, uh, to to discuss. Whatever they bring with them, w yeah. Whatever they want to talk about in relation of their own experiences yes. with with uh, r relatives or friends passing on. Um, not only that, but also you know, sort of more um, you know, big. Well, I mean, the bi the bigger pictures, um, talking about the whole um, death with dignity, uh, you know, physician assisted suicide, um, the the state of palliative care, the state of hospice, the state of home care. Uh, is there a soul? Is there an afterlife? Do you believe? You know, can we receive messages from the other side? Um, how to deal with you know with your own impending death? With you know looking after someone else? Um, absolutely everything from A to Z. People, it just depends. You know, th there's no um, agenda or speaker guest speakers. So <coughs> really the the conversation um, flows with whatever the participants bring with them. Uh, and it's uh, always fueled by cake. Always fueled by tea, coffee and cake. Some of the headlines that have been generated over the, the last few years in major media about death cafes, death be not decaffeinated over cup, <laughs> groups face taboo. As a front page story in the New York Times, death cafes breathe life into conversations about dying, that's uh, the way National Public Radio, uh, their take on it. Uh, tea and mortality. Uh, was the headline in the Independent and death cafes normalize a difficult, not morbid topic. USA Today. Uh, just before we talk about the you know the upcoming event, uh, the specifics of it. You know, in our family, um, our dad died when you were still in high school, and I was just out of high school. Our mother passed away four years later, and there was no concept that there would be discussion of any of the issues, any of the feelings. No with either death and this i grant I explain to the audience this goes back like 30 years we were essentially kids this is a big change this is a big change and it helps yes. people it helps people immensely uh to be able to talk about it um the the amount and range of resources that are available to people um you know it's the one thing that everyone will have to face every single one of us not everyone gets married not everyone has children not everyone you know lots of things but everyone is going to have to face death so um, you know to be able to bring it out of the closet um, and uh, you know n as you say sort of you know normalize the conversation so there's many people um, you know who may want to talk about it with their families it's very important you know a lot of um, emphasis put now on pre-planning letting your family know what your wishes are mm -hmm. having an advanced hair uh, an advanced care directive um, you know also known Do as your a, will. a living will you know organ donation mm -hmm. I mean all you know let your family know what you want very very important um, and uh, not every family wants to discuss it so it's you know people need need a place to be able to come and talk about uh, you know their fears thoughts dreams hopes so uh, four events planned from now till the end of the year uh, 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 this is not denominational a couple of them are being held at uh, Winnipeg synagogues but the next one the reason why uh, why we're doing this interview is uh, a rarity an afternoon death cafe yes so on Wednesday August 19th uh, so we had about 10 events last year um, we had several in Jewish venues because it's a you know an outreach project of our Jewish community and that was just you know, uh, oh, the our, easiest our, way to book. Yeah, the, exactly. You know, it's sort of our test, our test audience. Uh, we did have one last year at St. Mark's uh, Lutheran Church with the Manitoba Multi-Faith Council. Mm -hmm. um, so that was a very interesting gathering. There were uh, over seventy people attended, um, and uh, um, so this uh, we decided to do a few in the afternoon. We did have some people who find it difficult to get out in the evening. Sure. So we have uh, four events planned in the afternoon. The next one is Wednesday, August nineteenth, at the West Kildonan Library in West. Kildonan. Uh, very, uh, <laughs> lots of happy memories for me at the, I love yeah. the library. Ha happy memories for me at the West K Library. So, so and that's going to be from one to three in the afternoon. There's no yes. admission fee? There's no admission fee. We have a, a silver collection, you know, which uh, offsets the uh, cost of the cake, but uh, there's no admission fee, uh, non-denominational, open to anyone. It is not a bereavement support group. Uh, it is not for freshly bereaved people needing uh, support. Um, that's more comprehensive. Yes. Those uh, needs. Yes, th those are different needs. So um, you know, th th it's more of a uh, of a discussion group. So. And well attended and diverse. 
well attended and diverse. Uh, our last one we had in July, um, I actually limited to 12 people because we had it at my office and we only have room for 12 people around the boardroom table. Super oh, that's right, yeah. Um, we had 12, we had 13 women. Uh, some who had been before, some who had never been, some Jewish, some not, some who knew each other, some who didn't. Amazing, an amazing exchange of, uh, you know, sometimes it's easier to tell st secrets to a stranger than it is to someone in your own family. So it's... Uh <laughs> that's a good, well, that's true. Uh, so those of you that are interested, how can they find out more? Uh, find out more, we are at uh, Death Cafe Winnipeg at gmail.com we are death cafe winnipeg on facebook we are have a death cafe winnipeg group on meetup um and uh you can find us just google death cafe winnipeg and you'll find us if this is a topic that's affected you and uh for many of you it has this is a an opportunity to be able to uh talk with others about it in a, a non-judgmental manner and i encourage everybody to participate in these kinds of processes uh See, it's not all fire and brimstone here all the no, time. No, no, and there's cake, too. And there's cake, and, and there's we love cake. cake. Uh, we'll be back with more uh, civics coverage of provincial matters. God knows, I might even have to talk about the federal election at some point uh, next week on City Circus. And remember, as always, you have the power. It's okay.